mistakes earlier in their career seem to always be defined by those mistakes. Absolutely. I think it 100% reinforces what you just said. Yeah. And it's actually interesting that you said that because, you know, I think me and you growing up kind of been on opposite ends of the spectrum in terms of political correctness mm-hmm. and how you're viewed. And, you know, I, I've thought that I've always been commended for being politically correct. And recently I'm starting to tell, like, why is it that, you know, I'm saying all, why are these all the right things to say? Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's not, so, and it's, that's not necessary. That's not necessarily a shake your finger kind of thing because, you know, uh, you, you have to be able to see the kernel of, um, of genius in that, you know, because to, to act in a way that is efficacious amongst the, among, uh, amidst the consensus from the group within mm. the ecosystem that you're in is, is tactful. It's, it's, there's, it's utilitarian, yeah. right? But again, there's a, there's a profound truth that we are deeply driven to, to both act, acknowledge, access, and then, and then catalyze. And, and that's why the people who are truth tellers always seem out of place. Mm-hmm. And, um, again, it's, it's, you can tell that that profound meaning is there because even in, in your confession, Jordan, you're like, I've always been a politically correct guy and now yeah. I'm challenging it. Yeah. It's like, and that's always actually worked for you. Yeah. You went high major, yeah. you're playing professional ball overseas now, yeah. you yeah. know, you're still living a great life, being the political correct way. Mm-hmm. And even though it works for you well, by the standards of the, the group, you still are driven to say something more. And that's, right. that's how you can tell that truth is supersedes, uh, you know, most of the superficial topical things that we've erected in society. 100%. I know a lot of people curious now, if you think a return to the NBA is possible, Kevin Durant's tweet gave you a big endorsement, says you belong in the league. Right. Huge, right. right? Coming from a guy at his level. Mm-hmm. Do you think realistically it can happen? Anything can happen. I'm, I'm you know, uh, t- if I'm being honest, I didn't think I was going to get drafted in the first place. Yeah. I had, heard, I had heard so much talk pre-draft about how anxiety was seen as this, this mystery, uh, uh, leper like, you know, characteristic. Uh, and so, so I, I went into the draft with the expectation, with the unknown, you know, with the expectation that anything could happen. And, um, you know, I still sit in a very similar place today. The NBA is a really big corporation with a, with a great deal of decision makers. Now, at the very top, there's a vacuum of decision making and, and, and one would hope that specifically I would hope that, but I think anyone would hope that, those decision makers at the top don't feel so threatened by my intellectual progression or my in, my uh, willingness to challenge the system that there would be a unified decision to not allow me to play. And and I can't speak to that. Yeah, those do you, are do you that want you, that, though? Do you want to be back in the league? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I mean, I love to play. Yeah. I love the game. Yeah, and I'm a different guy in between the lines. Right. Anybody who's played with me or knows me or seen me play <laughs> understands that there is there is the philosophical Royce, yeah. or there is the Royce off the court, and then there's the Royce between the lines who you know w- might m- you or you know uh, you know say a number of things that would seem out of character <laughs> in, in in the in the off the court <laughs> realm. So, just the one, what you just said, the suspension in the CBL, yeah, seemed like it just came out of passion. You know, you were, if you can explain it, explain it in your words, because I don't want to put words in your mouth. Yeah, what what I mean, happened the, there? Because I, I know, so just the, from the, the outside, I don't think that helps your case at all with the NBA, you yeah. know, something like that. It, yeah. People probably look at that like, wow, you know, here's another example. Yeah, well, but the NBA is, no, is in no position to be my moral judge. Right. Absolutely. I mean, they're, they're, they're reprehensible. If they, if they want to revisit their relationship with Budweiser first, then they may be able to have a, a moral judge judgment that I would uh <laughs> consider uh but until until things like that happen on the fundamental level the NBA can can take their moral judgments and shove them up their ass I know the truth the truth about who they are and the truth about who I am and I also know that situations like that are often used to to confirm bias right and it's like anybody who understands this new media landscape should understand that when somebody pulls their phone out and takes a video with their smartphone that you're only seeing a tenth of the story. Absolutely agree. I mean, but, and, and we all can agree on that. And anybody who you pull into a conversation would agree on that. But the mechanisms that are, that are now in play of, of, of socializing are so good. We've developed them so well to work so well. Google, Steve Jobs, people like this who are brilliant minds have developed those products so well 
that we can subscribe to that common sense, but still go back and live the other way. True. That's the, that's the, that's the pernicious part of, of technology. Mm -hmm. It's like, we all know that what we're watching is only a portion of the story, but yet that's all we have to go off. We'll still judge you for it. We're still judge you for it. And so, you know, you talk about 15 seconds of me, you know, not really even using any profanity. Just look pissed off. I was pissed off for sure. And, you know, the backstory of it is that since I came into the NBA, I've had a disproportionate success. I got more triple doubles in one season than anybody has had in the six year, you know, existence of the league. And I dominated the teams. There's only 10 teams. So they got a good, uh, you could say fix of, of, of being dominated. The first year we went 35 and five in the regular season and we went 47 and six at overall and won that championship. The best record that, that, that league's ever seen. And the two games that we lost in the playoff were, were very, uh, special, you know, circumstances. So, you know, there's a resent that, that is built up from when, when you dominate someone. I mean, that's obvious. That's, that's not even arguable. That's just, a, that's just a known pattern of the way that humanity works. And the trouble is, is that in a place like Canada where socialism is the doctrine, and I'm not against socialism, but one of the, one of the, the dangers of socialism is that your attempt to equalize and, and you could say uh, create a, 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 a median, a median uh, quality of life is that you start to you start to view competence or elite or even you could say talent or skill as a threat and you start to resent that any type of meritocracy is not it's kind of resentful it's not a good thing at some point you know so and the, so fundamentally so what, what you're saying though is that the CBL thought you were too good and were dominating too much? Is no, that they, no, they didn't think that. They would actually, the, the more pernicious part of, the, of, of what I'm saying is that they would actually tell themselves and tell others that I wasn't that good while Harbringer resent because I was. And that's the, that's the mental health conversation. Yeah. It's not, not your ability to lie to others. That's obvious. Mm -hmm. It's your ability to lie to yourself internally. You know, and so, you know, as the situation progressed in the NBL over the last 18 months or, or 24 months, I was, you could say, um, de-incentivized to call them to the mat in any way that could turn public out of fear of people just going, oh, this is why the NBA kicked them out, right? Okay. But obviously, they're a, great, a person whose disposition like me could call a great many of any system or any circumstance into the question, you know, into question or on the table just because of the way that I think about the world or the way that I interact with the world, uh, the way that I consider the world. And so, so the NBL, the way that it unfolded was that I was aware of because of the proximity of, of international players to the, to the owners of their team and, and, and how close those relationships are versus let's say an NBA. I, I talked to the, the owner, the guy who owned our team every day. And I was always privy to the back behind the scenes politics that were going on in regard to me. People, you know, lobbying on behalf, uh, uh, lobbying to the league on behalf of getting me suspended, upgrading, upgrading fouls, common fouls, you know, clear path fouls to flagrants and then suspensions or, you know, uh, having suspensions be, you know, longer than 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 the precedented uh, than other precedented actions from other players in the past. You know, all of these things I was watching and. This year, we got our commissioner left and, and they hired the, a, a deputy commissioner and never filled the commissioner's spot. So, number one, the person who you saw me yelling at was the deputy commissioner, no one. That speaks volumes about the organization of the league. OK, so he was the former social media guy. Not to say that social media guys can't do a competent job in other positions, but he has no basketball experience. And we had a situation earlier this year where there was a, a controversy about a suspension of mine. I had, I had given a guy a, a elbow inadvertently to the jaw in a, in a live ball situation when a shot was going up. It was, it was, it was a clearly I was going to box a guy out and, and caught him in the chin with an elbow. And they wanted to suspend me for 20 games for that. And, and so, and, and I knew intimately about how they wanted to suspend me and why. So I called this deputy commissioner and he actually is such an idiot. And, and I can't, I can't, you know, be any nicer than that. It's like, he's such an idiot <laughs> that he actually told me that he wasn't being biased, but he actually explained his circumstance as the rest of the league believes that I'm in the, in, in Vito Fergio, who is our London Lightning team owner. They believe that I'm in his pocket. 
So in order to not look like I'm in his pocket, I can't be objective in these situations, basically. And he didn't even realize that that was actually biased in, in governing. Like he actually argued that he wasn't being biased. I said, dude, you literally just explained bias verbatim. Yeah. <laughs> You're an idiot. Yeah. I don't know how else to put this. It's, it's hard for me to try to, you know, articulate what that is other than idiocy. So there was pent up frustration with this guy to begin with. All year. Yeah, what what sets you off in that circumstance, though? Um, what so, is the context so, of the video? Yeah, so we were in St. John's, and it's the expansion team. It's Newfoundland. There aren't many black people there. That's number one. Uh, basketball just came back to the, you know, I think it's the first time that it's ever been there. They're, they're a hockey, you know, uh, uh, territory. And uh, when we've gone there, the, the fans have just been, you know, <laughs> ridiculously rowdy. You know, and the things that they say and the things that they do, uh, there's been racial uh, slurs that have been, you know, jousted at the players over the over the course of the season. And towards the end of the season, I just took a, you know, approach like I'll play back with you because I don't believe in the superficial uh, uh, construct of the athlete being a an apologetic role model. I never have. That's who I am. So I went back at the fans. I taunted them. I, I did everything in between. You know, I, I came to the bench and where other people would say, you know, focus on the game. I said, I'm the elite player out here. I can I can I can taunt the fans and still be the most elite dominant force out here. And I was showing them that. And and I could feel that there was a resentment building up from that. So we got to the playoffs, you know, I mean, while we were in the playoffs, you know, there was a, a point in time where they had let the St. John Edge's fans sit right behind our bench. So now when I was coming to the bench or things like that, people were saying, you know, things like, you know, fuck you, Royce, or, you know, I hope your plane crashes or, you know, uh, all kinds of shit like that. And I was just like, hey, man, that, that don't really bother me. You know, I could I could I could go with the best of them. JT knows this. I could 100 percent. I could talk with the best of them. That doesn't bother me one bit, <laughs> especially when I'm in that game mode. Now, if you catch me in the philosophical mode, I may be more, you know, jarred by a, a disproportionate, you know, sentiment but right. out there I'm like oh that's perfect you want to mm-hmm. go there that's only going to make me play better for yeah. sure well, we've had instances we, <laughs> personally Come when we got into yeah, it yeah no so and so so after the game there was a, there were the, the fans had <laughs> made the claim that I made homophobic slurs which obvious a fan would do in Canada where there's a gender pronoun conversation surrounding the LGBT conversation easy low hanging fruit to say that the 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 angry black guy is 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 attacking the gay community yeah right of course from the drunk fan it's like you sure you heard that right okay so what happened the very next game was that those fans were cleared from behind our bench and i and i wrote a letter and i said listen i didn't make any homophobic slurs but to me if you don't acknowledge that there is a such thing as disability slur, then I can't really acknowledge that there's a such thing as homophobic slurs because there is a such thing as a disability slur. And when you bring anxiety or mental illness into the fray of, of, uh, of insult, not that I'm saying you can't do it, but right. you certainly then can't make the claim that you have a, a, a reasonable grievance if something is said to you. You know, in, in, re- in response, not even, you know, out of... Out of uh, Initiation out of response. So what happened was is those fans were moved from behind the bench. Now, they couldn't move the fans from the baseline. So all those fans that got tickets for behind the bench, they just moved to, to the baseline closer to our bench. So they kept yelling the stuff, and they were yelling some of the similar things the next game. You know, F- you, I hope your f-ing plane crashes. Did you fly in? You know, uh, all of these type of, you know, anxiety, you know, fear of flying related insults. And uh, I wasn't even that mad at it. But our deputy commissioner came by our bench during a timeout and was taking pictures of a group of fans that had had a sign with Zorro on it that said that it was my found brother. Now, most people would know this, but I have a, a significant Mexican heritage. My grandma was a ri- my grandmother. My, my I'm sorry. My great grandmother was first generation from Aguas Calientes, Mexico. So now, now that's a that's an actual racist comment. Yeah. Yeah. But you, and, and I'm not even mad at that because you wouldn't know that, you know, because you're so involved in the topical form of media. Why would you know that? Which is why in another conversation we can talk about how I've gone through a, a significant time with Wikipedia and trying to make my information accurate just in the attempt to let people know that I am Mexican. So you wouldn't make that mistake because that's how information should be exchanged. And that's the responsibility that comes along with providing information. And I'm trying to do my part as I usually am. 
But however, you know, I digress. 